Good evening and welcome to another session from uh, RUL Ministries with Mihai Kocha. My name is, of course, Mihai Kocha and I'm your host this evening again with unprecedented uh, Bible studies and material. Uh, like we've always um, done it so far uh, since we started, um, we will always present unprecedented Bible studies that have never been uh, presented before. Um, <clears throat> uh, for those who do not know me, um, I am the author of Rediscovering Unchanging Love, and this is part one. Rediscovering Unchanging Love, part one. And Rediscovering a Change in Love, Part 2. <clears throat> and these books are sold uh, wherever books are being sold. Uh, that's Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, my website, uh, www.rediscoveringunchanginglove.com. That's what R-U-L stands for. R-U-L for Rediscovering Unchanging Love. And that's the uh, title of my books. We, um, we studied for a while in the book of Revelation. We're going to continue a little bit in the book of Revelation. And today we're going to study together chapter number 9. Um, and this chapter, I have to admit, it is with the help of um, a Bible scholar called, uh, named um, William Miller uh, during the Millerite movement. And I, I do not have the book here with me right now, but um, he published his book in um, 1841 and 1842 by William Miller. He's the, um, the founder of the Millerite movement, The Midnight Cry, and he studies um, the book of, the, uh, mainly the books of Daniel and Revelation. Not only, but especially these two books, which have been, um, how should I say, many people consider them sealed, even though they were not sealed. The book of Daniel has been sealed for, uh, for a long time in the Old Testament, but uh, not, the, um, not the book of Revelation. And now they're both, uh, including the book of Daniel, they're both open and ready to be studied. Um, <clears throat> So, um, that's where my help comes from in my inter interpretation, because um, he really did some really good studies um, on, um, on Daniel Revelation, and I think he was very uh, inspirational, and I, I advise him uh, also uh, to be read by anybody who's interested in a deep Bible studies. So, right now we're going to go into chapter 9 of Revelation. And it's the, um, the fifth angel which sounded the trumpet. Okay, so it's the fifth trumpet. And we will read um, the first and second verses. It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. So this star is a man. Because it says, um, I saw a star fall from heaven and to him was given the key of the bottom, bottomless pit. To him. Not to her, not to it, but to him. So he must be a man. Okay. Um, all right, um, the fountain, okay, the, um, oh, one second. It's the bottom of the spit, I'm sorry, but, yeah, or the abyss, it says. So the, um, the bottom of the spit means that it's a spring or a source of teaching okay it's like a fountain of teaching um and that's what it is how it is translated in the in the romanian bible as a fountain um of the deep okay without bottomless 
fountain, which is same thing like a spring or a source of teaching. Um, the bottomless spit, okay, means demonic, okay, uh, not of human origin. Uh, in other words, without, without humans, okay, the bottomless spit means um, a teaching that does not come from humanity, but from demonic origin. Uh, and this could be proven in Luke 8. Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> One second. Verse um, 31. Luke 8 verse 31. <clears throat> And we read, and the demons, okay, they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. This is when Jesus uh, is casting the demons out of that uh, man who is possessed by a legion of demons. And uh, the demons are, uh, are begging Jesus that so they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. This is not into like the, the Mediterranean or the, the Sea of Galilee, but into a place where there are no human beings because he was casting them out of human beings and he was going to send them into the pigs. Okay? And um, he says, do not, they besought him not to command them to go into the deep. In other words, out of the human, out of human beings, where there are no human beings or, or no beings whatsoever. To them, for demons not to possess beings is great agony. They they need to possess somebody, or they will be uh, in great suffering. So that's what this is. Um, the bottomless spit is a is is a source of teaching or teachings, and they do not come from human origin, but from demonic demonic origin, pure demonic origin. Uh, and it says, this man, okay, as it is translated here, um, this star fell from heaven, okay? So, this man falls from heaven on earth. That means he falls from grace or he is rejected, okay, to go into the world. So, he's rejected from God's kingdom to go out into the world. And this is, could be none other but prophet Muhammad, who was actually a false prophet, who had the chance to find out about Christ, but he did not uh, repent. He was a um, actually he was a um, a traveler. He was uh, uh, a merchant, and wherever he traveled, he found he, he met a lot of Christians, a lot of Jews, and he came in contact with the knowledge of the Bible, especially. Um, especially the Old Testament, but also the New Testament also. And um, it looks like he studied a lot because he knows a lot about the book of Genesis. Uh, some of the prophets, he knows a lot about Jesus. And I don't think that's just from, um, from uh, divine um, visions, you know, uh, revelations. But I, I think he studied, okay? And um, there's proof of that. Uh, where he actually um, he studied and he didn't know what to do with the studies okay um, I won't go into that detail but he had a chance to um, be God's messenger among the Arabs and kind of for for Christian he was he was supposed to be a, become a Christian and he kind of refused and then Satan just took him to the hold of him. The, uh, yes. So, <clears throat> so he had a chance to know about Christ, but he did not repent. The biggest evil that he, um, that he um, practiced and that he did not repent from was polygamy. I mean, he had a lot of wives. Um, I don't know exactly, but I think it's like 12 or 13 at least. So since 
He was 40 years of age. <clears throat> he was taken by, <clears throat> by Satan, who deceived him, pretending to be Angel Gabriel. Okay, that's, uh, that's the story with Muhammad. <clears throat> um, everybody knows that Gabriel always um, testified about Jesus. Okay, um, in the book of Daniel, he called him the chief prince, Archangel Michael, uh, the prince of your people. Okay, that's in uh, Revelation, in uh, Daniel uh, 12, and also Daniel uh, chapter 10, if I'm correct. So, uh, <clears throat> and then again, he testifies about Jesus to, um, to Zechariah in the book in the New Testament, which is the father of John the Baptist, and also to Virgin Mary, okay, he testified the, the Jesus that was supposed to be born, the Messiah. And here with Muhammad, he, the angel cannot behave in a, in a different manner. You know, he cannot take a different stand of, as of rejecting Jesus to be the Messiah. So that's why I don't believe this was Gabriel, but Satan pretending to be Gabriel. So uh, <clears throat> this smoke that uh, arose, he says, um, he opened the bottom of the spit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace. Uh, this is actually the new Muslim religion, which does not enlighten people, but darkens, okay? It darkens, it, it sh uh, kind of blocks the light, instead of letting the light shine on him. And it says that um, the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So that's how strong this religion religion was, this teaching, that it kind of darkened the, the light of the gospel from the, um, from the uh, Arabian Peninsula, okay, among the Arabs. They could not see the gospel anymore, except the new teachings of of of, um, of Muhammad. That's why I think he was supposed to be God would have chosen God chose him to be a great evangelist among the Arabs, and I think he just rejected that invitation. <clears throat> um, and history sh shows that his youngest wife was about. Nine years of age, because her name was Aisha. Uh, some say she was nineteen, no, nine. Some others say that she was twelve or thirteen, and some others say that she was between sixteen and eighteen. I cannot um, necessarily accuse him of that because I, nobody knows exactly. It's very likely that she she could have been more um, sixteen of age, sixteen years of age, sixteen, eighteen years of age. Uh, personally, I don't believe she was necessarily nine years of age, but it's possible. But I don't know that for sure. I cannot be um, um, held accountable for that. So um, I can't say that for sure. There's no sure um, record of that. So I think she would have been older than nine, around 16, I want to say. But again, he had many, many wives. So that was, uh, that was a big problem. Okay, that's a huge problem. So um, we continue with verse number three, chapter nine, verse three. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and uh, unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have as the scorpions of the earth have power. And um, this is also we can read it. Um, we can read an, uh, from Naum, the book of Naum. All right, Prophet Naum. Let me open over there. <clears throat> this is one of the smaller prophets. And it's chapter 3 from 15 to 17. So Naum, chapter 3 from 15 to 17. And it says, There shall, be f there shall the fire devour thee. The, sh the sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. 
make thyself many as the canker worm, make thyself many as the locusts. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. The canker worm spoils and, the f and flees away. The crowned are as the locusts, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers, which camp in the hedges of, in the cold day. But when the sun arises, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Okay, so this is a description of the armies of Nineveh, if you remember that. And they're like locusts, okay? Described like locusts. So um, <clears throat> we have more. So from this teaching, which is the smoke, it says, um, out of the smoke, out of this teaching came out locusts. In other words, armies. All right, we have another um, reference in Judges. The book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 5, says, For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. These are the armies of the um, Midianites. This is on the t uh, during the time of um, Gideon. All right, so let's read that again. So, uh, for they came up with ca their cattle and tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered in, into, into the land to destroy it. So these are uh, armies described as grasshoppers. And there's another one also, Book of Judges, chapter 7, verse 12. So chapter 7, verse 12. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. So this is a symbol in chapter uh, 9, verse 3 in Revelation of armies, armies of the uh, Arabs or the Muslims, okay? Um, which came out of this because of this teaching, the Muslim uh, teaching, which was, you know, um, uh, brought by Muhammad, their prophet. Um <clears throat> So there are many number, like many in number, like locusts, like grasshoppers. Um, and they're also like scorpions, okay? That means that have they have venom, okay? There's poison in this in this teaching which they carry out, these armies, okay, and they evangelize with this teaching. In other words, they poison. Uh, other people that uh, come, in, they they kind of come in contact with. They're kind of like like Christian evangelists, but they're Muslim evangelists. Same principle, but the diff different teaching. And with this, instead of uh, giving eternal life to people, bringing them to life through Jesus, they actually uh, poison them. All right, so uh, spiritual that is spiritual poison. And we will continue with verse four, uh, four and five. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. So um, this Ottoman Empire now, okay, that's what it is. It was commanded to it to uh, attack only the ones without the uh, seal of God in their foreheads. And who has, during the uh, Muslim, during the Ottoman Empire, who has the, uh, the seal of God in their foreheads? The Christians, okay, especially the reformers. So in this case, knowing what the Ottoman Empire had in mind, they had in mind to attack Constantinople, which is the Orthodox the Greek Orthodox Church. So, it, in other words, this empire is not against the, the Christian reformers, but it was against the ones without the seal of God, which are the Greek Orthodox. Even though they are Christians, in their teachings, they're actually not Christians. Just because they believe in Jesus doesn't mean that somebody is a Christian because they worship idols, they um, uh, worship relics, okay? They, um, 
yeah, the um, many abominable things. They um, use uh, things from the Old Testament, incense. They burn incense. Um, they keep uh, so many, uh, what do you call it, feasts. Okay, like Easter, like uh, Christmas, and many other feasts. Um, they venerated uh, Virgin Mary, and so on. I can keep going and going nonstop. So they're not really Christians with the seal of God in their foreheads. In other words, with God's law. They don't obey God's law. That's what the seal of God was. His, we spoke about it uh, in previous studies. It is actually God's teachings, which is actually His law in their foreheads. If you don't have God's seal, that means you don't have God's commandments. So, uh, <clears throat> it, is, um, it is commanded to attack the Greek Orthodox Church. And this it will do. Uh, which is the uh, Byzantine Empire. And it says five months. And they should be tormented five months. Okay. Five months. If you remember back in uh, in our studies. A day. or A regular day. Literal day equals a year. So. Um, a month is 30 days. Therefore it's 30 years. Five months. It is 30 Times five. And that is 150 days, which is 150 years. And that's for, for all those who uh, need probably to understand this a little better. So 30 times five, that's 150 days, which is 150 years. So there, um, it's it, it was commanded them that they should torment. Um, excuse me. They should torment uh, the Byzantine Empire for five months. You will see that there's actually two phases to this empire, biblically. One which in which they um, just torment the uh, Byzantine Empire. The second one we will talk about it very shortly. Um. <clears throat> So the first 150 years, the five months, uh, it was to contaminate almost in the entire Byzantine territory with the with the uh, Muslim religion. Okay, that's what it is. So to weaken it. Okay, in other words, to attract many to this religion, either attract many or have a lot of people from Constantinople flee. They were scared. Because they felt that the Ottomans were coming. They were attacking nonstop. They're known for their attacks. Quick, swift attacks. And um, they were coming in and out like thieves. And, 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 and pretty much a lot of people got scared of them. Um, <clears throat> and this was to punish. All right. This is allowed by God to punish the old Roman Empire which moved from Rome to Constantinople through Constantine the Great, if you remember that, and uh, persecuted many, many of God's children. So now it is his turn. Okay? <clears throat> now it's his turn to be uh, persecuted in a way, in a way punished. Um, the Ottomans had no business with God's children, with God's reformers, uh, but they just wanted Constantinople. Um, so the Orthodox uh, Christians, the Greek Orthodox, were, were the ones who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now, when does this start, <clears throat> the five months? Um, and I take this from... Um, from the book of uh, William Miller. I apologize that I don't have the book here with me. But um, this starts, okay, with uh, Osman. Osman, the, uh, the one who started the Ottoman Empire. When he first attacked uh, and he became Sultan in Nicomedia, he... Um, he attacked Nicomedia for the first time in, on 
July 27th, 1299, okay? And that's what it starts with. That's the day that uh, the Ottoman Empire, the prophecy, the five months, which is 150 years, start with. July 27th, 1299. And you can Google this and you will see the result immediately um, that Osman attacked uh, Nicomedia. He entered and became sultan um, for the first time on uh, July 27th, 1299 AD. And this lasted 150 years. Of course, uh, 1299, 1299 plus 150, 150 years equals 1449. Until 1449 AD. For those who do not um, probably understand what I'm on. But I'm trying, it's probably better for them to see it. Okay, so 1299. So this lasts until um, 1449, right before, um, just a few years before Constantinople was um, conquered by the Ottomans. <clears throat> okay, all right, so far. <clears throat> and we continue verse number six. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Uh, this period is the period when uh, men were not interested in the truth, or in the light, but in the uh, spiritual darkness. <clears throat> okay. Um, Right when, like, around 1299, is a, a great darkness. Um, people were not interested in, in, in eternal life, but they were just, in other words, in deep corruption. Okay. <clears throat> um, like during the medieval times, that's what that's when actually is talking about. Um, so. So men, sh they shall seek death and shall not find it. Uh, <clears throat> so during the time of the uh, medieval time when the darkness, the spiritual darkness in those, in those times were, was deep because the Bible was not available to the people. Okay? <clears throat> and if uh, the darkness says, and sh uh, they, they seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them so in other words they uh, the darkness now in those times is being turned around that when the reformers are starting to uh, starting to evangelize the world they start to preach the true word of the true word of God and the true light so that the darkness cannot be found anymore in other words death or darkness cannot be found anymore because the light of the reformers is starting to shine bright. That's what it actually means. This already started with the Waldenses, okay, uh, in northern Italy. And, um, and then it continued with the Huguenots and, of course, with the uh, reformers in, Ger in Germany, which is Saxonia, and uh, Switzerland, and so on, England, and so on. So death or the spiritual darkness was starting to disappear. Okay, that's what it, that's what that's how you translate this uh, this verse. In those days shall men seek death and shall not find it because the light of the gospel is starting to shine bright in those days. That's how strong uh, the light started to shine. That. Men were looking for darkness and they couldn't find it anymore. They could not find it. They, could, they weren't, able, weren't able to find darkness. All right. So um, this is also very similar to the fourth vial in uh, chapter 16 of Revelation. 
Um, and this is chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. Very similar to this. And it says, The fourth angel put out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which has power, which has power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. So this is the same period that is talking about where the sun, the light of the sun, which is Jesus, he is the son of our righteousness. That's what the Bible says. He is the son of our righteousness, was shining so bright that it was um, it was showing the corruption of the Catholic Church and its abuses. So that the Catholic Church being so in such way exposed, they were there was blaspheming God, so to speak. Not directly, but indirectly by persecuting those who were bringing this light upon them. So it's the same principle. That's why it's symbolic language, and we have to be careful how we interpret it. Okay? <clears throat> so, men were, in those times, they, they, you couldn't find death. That's how strong the light was. And um, it's talking about the period so we, we can make no mistake on this. We can do this to verse number 7. <clears throat> um, and it says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of man. <clears throat> so the Ottomans had us um, horses, which is um, spirits. All right, a, a horse is a, is, a, is a symbol of a spirit, and this is a spirit of war. That's what it is. <clears throat> um, the symbol for spirit, I will show you right away. I think it's in the book of Zechariah. I forgot to look this up, but I, I can find it easily. Um, <clears throat> Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 6, and you'll see that what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Zechariah 6. Um, yeah. One second here, just a little bit. Chapter 6 of Zechariah. <clears throat> um. And I can read chapter 6. <clears throat> it says, verse 2. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot black horses, and in the third chariot white horses, and in the fourth chariot gristled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of the, all the earth. All right, so the horses are spirits, the spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord uh, of all the earth. And horses are, they were spirits of war. Okay, that's what horses wore. When you went with horses uh, out, uh, you were going with battle. And they're going, um, uh, this is during the time when, um, when Zachariah was talking about when they were rebuilding the temple. In Jerusalem, when they came back, and there was actually peace. And it's talking about the horses are talking about, if you read the whole chapter, chapter 6, um, they're talking about peace. So uh, even the horses, the spirit of wars, declared that there was peace in that time. So that's what a horse means. It means a spirit of, uh, a spirit or a spirit of war. So um, the Ottomans, again, verse 7 says, uh, were like the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. So they are they are the spirit of war, and that's what it was. Everybody knows that the the Ottomans were they were very skilled in in the um, in warfare. Uh, the crowns of gold says here. On their heads there were uh, crowns of uh, there were crowns like gold. This symbol symbolizes that uh, they all. Um, all of them were like officials and um, the, 
they pretend to be worshipped, okay? And this is true about uh, Muslims. Um, if you refuse, if you had refused back in the days to um, to become a Muslim, then you would have to bow down to a Muslim if you wanted if you wanted to stay alive. So they were like um, they were like considered officials in front of everybody. You know, they didn't have little crowns of gold. What it means is that they were very highly esteemed, all of them. So it, to all those who were not Muslim Muslims and who did not uh, accept the Muslim religion, they were like, um, they were above them. They were considered way, way above them. And they had to pretty much uh, obey them and even, even worship them, seriously. <clears throat> um, it said, and they had... Um, the faces were as the faces of, and their faces were as, as, the, as the faces of men. In other words, um, a man is a symbol of pride. Okay. Um, if you remember the lion from the book of Daniel that had uh, two wings, it stands up and it was given to it a, a, a man's heart instead of the lion heart, which is, you know, a, a lion has a lot of courage and, um, is unstoppable, is not afraid of anything. A man's heart is now timid, but at the same time proud, pride. So he has a, a face of a man, means that he's actually, they're actually very proud. Um, they're after um, riches, you know, a lot of gold with the Muslims. Um, they're worldly, that's what man is, worldly. And um, at the same time, um, the, it's a symbol of disobedience and independence. Uh, not a man of who are obedient to God, but somebody who's very like very ph Pharisaic, if you want to say it that way. Okay, they're very spiritual, religious, but it's a it's a very um, very how should I say boastful. Religion, like very proud with what with, 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 with they have. Even the, even their turbans, they were so proud of their turbans. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> also, um, <clears throat> it also possible that the crowns of gold could represent actually their belief in Christ, in Jesus Christ. Muhammad wrote about Jesus. Okay, uh, he called him uh, Isa. <clears throat> he wrote about Jesus. He's about his birth. His virgin, uh, about the virgin, uh, virgin Mary, her, uh, when she became pregnant and she gave birth to, uh, Jesus, um, she was conceived while she was still a virgin, and they believe in that, and, uh, the Muslim believe in Christ, and they recognize him as a prophet, but not as the Messiah, so in that sense, could be those crowns of gold, they're partially, partially Christian, but not all the way. They have something, some gold, but not all the way. Uh, and they also recognize him as being the spirit and the nature of God. All right? But they do not accept him as the Messiah. All right? They're almost like Christians, but not like Christians, if you want to believe it that way. Yeah. And many Christians today believe that same way too. They, they don't believe that Jesus is God. Uh, they don't believe that he's divine. He's just uh, a prophet or the first angel that was created and descended from heaven. And he was named, um, uh, you know, the son of God. But not necessarily he wasn't God. Okay, he's not a member of the Trinity because many don't even believe in Trinity. So in a sense, the Muslims are kind of the same way too. And um, they believe that um, Jesus was a prophet and Muhammad was a prophet and they were both both prophets of the same God Allah okay <clears throat> that's what they believe verse 8 and they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions <clears throat> and it is true the Muslims really had long hair that's what they had tied up in their turbans okay it is very very true but even though they have long hair, they have nothing feminine in them, okay? Um, 
but they're very cruel. Uh, that's what it says. They have teeth like lions, which means they're they're nothing nothing feminine in them, and they're very cruel. All right. Uh, and the long hair uh, symbolizes or represents that they have some kind of some kind of an oath, and that's what it is actually. And that's how it was transferred from the Old Testament, the Nazarene oath, like Samson had it, like Samuel, Jesus, you know, John the Baptist, same thing, same idea. They have some kind of covenant, some kind of oath with uh, with uh, Allah. Um, verse nine, so chapter nine, verse nine. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. <clears throat> so um, the breastplates is found in Isaiah 59. The explanation of breastplates. Isaiah 59. <clears throat> 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak all right so he put on righteousness as a breastplate so right here we have the definition of breastplate and there's another one in ephesians 6 14 ephesians 6 14 <clears throat> and we read Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Same thing, same symbol. So, again, and had breastplates, which means they had righteousness as it was righteousness of iron. Okay? Um, so, the righteousness of the Muslims is like iron, which is very rigid very tough, without any uh, um, love, without any pure love, real love, which is demonic, as the, just as demonic as the Romans, okay, as is described in you know, the Roman Empire as the, the beast with um, teeth of iron and claws of uh, uh, brass, yes, and it tore in pieces, that's cruelty. That's what the, the, the that's what this righteousness of iron means. Very, in other words, not a, a righteousness like Christ, but very worldly. Okay, like the Romans had it. No, no real love, but demonic. And it says that the um, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses riding to battle. So their wings, if you remember the. Uh, Book of Daniel, um, and many others, you know, in uh, as we read in Jeremiah, says um, it's actually their attacks. Like Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 40. Jeremiah 48, verse 40. <clears throat> and we will read. For this is the Lord. Behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. <clears throat> spread his wings over Moab. Moab, in other words, this was talking about the Babylonian Empire through Nebuchadnezzar, spread his wings, not necessarily protecting like it is usually. No, this is attacks. In other words, he will attack Moab. Another one, it is also Jeremiah 49, 22. Jeremiah 49, 22. Behold, he shall come, come up as uh, and fly as an eagle and spread his wings over Botsra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty man of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. Again, attacks. Wings are the attacks. Attacks of the Babylonians in this case. Again, Ezekiel 124. Ezekiel 124. Mm. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, and as the voice of the Almighty. The voice of speech and the noise of a host. And when they stood, they let down their wings. So like a host, like a armies. Same same um, uh, idea. Like attacks. Uh, uh, Ezekiel 10, 5. Ezekiel 10, verse 5. 
and the sound of the cherubim's wing, wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaks. <clears throat> A voice, great voice. And here we have, again, uh, and, the, and, and the sound of the wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. So this is... <clears throat> Again, so the uh, the the, uh, the noise of their wings is um, of their attacks is like the sound of their uh, chariots um, pulled by many of many horses run into battle, um, and that's what it is. Their um, <clears throat> like many horses meaning many spirits, okay, like many spirits, and which is true. They when um, such spiritual attacks, they're done by demons also. They come with the power of demons. Um, so, or their attacks, okay, are done with the help of demons, okay? And they're like demons, which is spiritual attacks of poisoning. That's what it is. Um, when they attack, they attack to poison. It's a spiritual poisoning. Verse 10, 9, 10. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Uh, tails, remember from Isaiah chapter um, 9, 9, 15. I read this, I think, last time. Um, and you can read yourself. Isaiah 9, 15 means that the tails... Or the false prophet. Tail means is definition of a false prophet, which um, uh, they spread this uh, Muslim religion. All right, so um, a lot of which, of course, Muhammad. That's what Muhammad was. It was a false prophet, and then many after. Again, there's many writings of the Muslims right even after Muhammad. A lot of uh, imams, a lot of uh, preachers. They were. They made a lot of writings, and a lot of people uh, took them as, you know, truth, spiritual truth. So, uh, <clears throat> these false prophets are spreading a lot of, a lot of their teachings, like, uh, um, like scorpions with their tails, okay? All right, for five months. So, um... Again, uh, this um, Muslim religion is is a uh, is a lie. Okay, that's what this actually means, <clears throat> because it stings people with poison. Um, and these five months start with again uh, July twenty seventh, twelve ninety nine, and these five months end in fourteen forty nine. Verse eleven, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue, has his name Apollyon. In my Bible, okay, um, I have a um, concordance, all right, and I have translations of these words. Um, Abaddon, in my Bible, says a literal translation means destruction, and uh, Apollyon is destroyer okay destruction and destroyer this king all right is it says they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit an angel means symbolically a man do you remember the beginning of uh, revelation here Revelation 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things has uh, he that holds the seven stars to him. He, he's not writing to angels. He's writing to these human beings. So angel could be, it, mean, it also means uh, either a man or people. Okay? People. Uh, which is spiritual people. Um <clears throat> And that's how he addresses every church to the 
uh, church of Thyatira, to the uh, church of Pergamos, to the angel of the church of Sardis, to the angel of the church of Laodicea, and so on. These are people. So the angel of the bottomless pit means the person, okay, this is uh, that the king, who's the king over them. He's a king who's an angel. Angels are not kings. All right. Angels are not kings. A king is a person. Okay. And this person has the key. He's the master of the bottomless pit. Who is this man? He's a spiritual man. And the only one who was destroying the world. Okay. That's what it is. He's the destroyer. All right. He is, he is the destruction and the destroyer. And the only one, all right, the only king at that time who was destroying the world at that time during the time of the Ottomans was the papacy, okay? The papacy that held the key to the bottomless pit. He was the one and only, the biggest. And we know that from history, that the papacy did so much evil, so much persecution, so much killing, and so much false teaching that um, he is the one and only. He was teaching the Ottomans how to do it. So, Pope is the one who hired the Muslims to take over the Byzantine Empire or the uh, Greek Orthodox to win them back. Because before 1449, before the uh, Constantinople fell, the the Roman Empire was was united, okay, and the two capitals were one in Rome and one in Constantinople. Uh, this was even after Constantine the Great. This is even during uh, Justinian, and after they've been together for a long time, and then, then they split, okay, because of differences. In territories and some differences in the beliefs and um, this Greek Orthodox Church they just want to be on their own and the Pope says you have to come back because I'm the king this is the original church and they were like no sorry we're not coming back and this was uh, an attack and the Ottomans were, were used by the Pope to destroy, to actually conquer Constantinople. If you remember Constantine, the last one, Constantine the Eleventh, I think is the last king. He asked Pope for help, and Pope said, "Well, um, if I help you, you're gonna you're gonna come back." And Constantine refused, and they were conquered. Yes, and that is actually true. He asked them right before the Muslims came in. He asked Rome. For help and Rome uh, uh, they, that's what they offered they said uh, they, they offered one under one condition we'll help you if you come back in other words you accept my authority over you and he refused and that's when Constantinople fell so yes the uh, it is true the Ottomans were actually hired they were um, led by the Pope to um, conquer Constantinople. They were, in a sense, his tool to punish all the... As you, if, if you understand, if you know the history of the Ottoman Empire, they never came into the West. They always conquered the Eastern Europe. Okay? So that's what the, that's what the Pope says. That's all you're going to conquer, and that's it. You're not going to come any further. In other words, the entire... They took over the entire... Um, um, uh, territory of the Greek Orthodox Church so they could control it under the authority of the Pope. And that is true. That is, that, that's a fact. Verse 12 says, uh, One woe is past, and behold, they, they, they come two woes more hereafter. In other words, um, the trumpets that are, that are uh, following are also woes and plagues at the same time too because they're like plagues now um now this the sixth trump is the second phase of the ottoman empire 
And um, we'll read that from 13 to 15. Chapter 9, 13 to 15. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which, is, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the voice from the four horns of the altar, this is the golden altar um, before the Ark of the Covenant. That was inside the temple, if you remember, back in um, the Old Testament. And this is actually the voice of the, it's the, the voice of the shed, of the, of the blood that was shed by the martyrs, which, which called for uh, revenge or justice. And this could be seen in, in Revelation 6. Verses 9 and 10. Um, same idea. So Revelation 6, 9 and 10. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, same altar, the golden altar, the golden altar, um, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, uh, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And the same principles applied here. In other words, <clears throat> um, and the sixth angel sounded, and, uh, and I heard the voice of the fourth um, horns of the altar. It says, in other words, the voice is the voice of the blood of the martyrs, okay, which calls for, and just like the blood of Ab Abel. Remember Abel that was uh, killed by Cain? His blood was crying for revenge. It's the same idea here. The blood of martyrs, which was killed, uh, which were killed by the Roman Empire, the pagan Roman Empire, remember? Uh, now it's asking for revenge. Now the time has come for the Roman Empire to pay, to pay for the blood of those uh, martyrs. And um, it has come. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the, um, the punishment of the Byzantine Empire, the Roman Byzantine Empire, Constantinople. To loosen the four angels means to not to keep them under control anymore, to, uh, to let them free. These four angels um, are the locusts that until now, they were only spreading their Muslim religions for 150 years, the five months. Okay, These were the, the four angels with the four people. Which was the Turks, the Arabs, so Turks, Arabs, the Saracens, and the Bedouins. All right, four people mainly. These are the four main people. And lore to, to them, I'm sorry, to them it was given uh, the, the 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 power now to to go and con conquer Constantinople. Though so, other uh, other uh, peoples um, that were allied to them, which was the Tartars, okay, uh, which were also brought by the Pope through Marco Polo. Remember, because Marco Polo was traveling to China, China and Mongolia, the Mongolian Empire. Well, they were brought now also, they were hired again uh, through Marco Polo and through Marco Polo's father and Marco Polo's uncle, same thing. Um, they were hired because even the Jesuits had a lot of power now in China. All right, I studied about this and I heard that they had power in China during this time. The Jesuits were now focusing on China to get China, <clears throat> and that were able to get to the Chinese, also the the Tartars against the uh, uh, against the Greek Orthodox Church, also the Orthodox territory. So from now on, the uh, Roman Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, the former uh, empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, will become the territory of the Ottomans, which was given to them by 
the Pope to, to control. And it says here, um, and the four inches were loosed, uh, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year for to slay the third part of man. And if we, if we follow the day year principle, like one day is one year, <clears throat> um, we we come to the the hour is is actually fifteen days, all right, because you have um, three hundred sixty days in a year, and you have twenty four hours, so you have. Let me do this math quick so you can actually I can prove it to you. <clears throat> so let me double check this. Yes. So 360 days. All right. And you can do this yourself. So 360 divided by 24 equals 15. One second. Yes. So 360. Divided by 24 equals 15 days. All right? Because if you follow these principles of day, year, okay, 360 days is actually um, 360 years. And one day, one little day is a, a, a little year. Therefore, 24 hours in a day. Um, it says, so So the, let, let's, so the, the hour, okay, if you divide this by the hour, you have 15 days, okay, 360 divided by, by 24, and maybe I should show it to you so you can understand it better. So you have 360 divided by 24, and you come with 15, okay, 15 days. 360 by 24 is 15. Then we have... Um, so it's the hour, all right, the hour, and uh, a day, a day is a year, right, one day, one day represents one little year, okay, okay, so there is that, mm -hmm. so 15 days, then we have uh, one year, okay, then you have a month, okay, that's what it says, the hour, they were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, a month is 30 days, which means 30 years, Thirty years, Thirty days is 30 years, and then we have, and a year, and a year is 360 days, Therefore, 360, 360 years, okay? And if we add these up, so we have 360, 360 plus 30, plus 30, plus uh, another year, okay? Okay, and then you have 15 days, all right? So 360 plus 30 plus 1 equals 391, 391 years, all right? That's what it was. We had um, a year, okay? 30 days, which was 30 years, 360 days, which was 360 years, which was a whole, a whole year. So 30... Plus one plus three sixty equals three ninety one, and fifteen days. All right, because we had we had the hour, which is three hundred sixty divided by twenty four is the hour, which is fifteen. So we have three hundred ninety one years and fifteen days. Three hundred ninety one years and fifteen days. Okay. And that's where that is. <clears throat> so that's how long the sixth trumpet lasts. Okay. 
why is that important important you will see uh, <clears throat> so uh that's how the um the the the, the period is the the six, during the sixth trumpet of the Ottoman Empire and then this was 91 years and 15 days plus plus the uh, five months the first period remember the fifth trumpet which was five months 150 years so 391 plus 150 equals one four equals <clears throat> yeah five hundred and forty one years and fifteen days and fifteen days so All right, so you have right here at the bottom, you have um, 391 years and 15 days plus 150 years. There's the first period, which is the five months, all right, which is um, 150 years, equals to 541 years and 15 days. Okay. <clears throat> and if this starts in July 27, 1299, okay, what does this mean? If if this starts when when uh, Osman the uh, when became when he became, when he became Sultan on July uh, 27, 1299 plus so 1299 99 plus 541 equals 1840 okay. 1840. All right. But because it starts on July 27th, that means in on August 11th, August 11th of 1840, the Ottoman Empire is supposed to lose its power. All right. So if it lasts for five months, the 150 years, then 391 years and uh, 15 days, that means from July 27th, 1299, starting, it will end in August 11th, 1840. The power of the Ottoman Empire will, will end in August 11th, 1840. <clears throat> um, all right. Um, and on August 11th, 1840, the Ottoman Empire loses its power. Um, and if you... Uh, Google it, okay, you go back to history, you can see that on that day, the Ottoman Empire gave authority to the powers of Europe to um, deal with the Egyptians who conquered the Ottoman Empire and, and took over the, its fleet. The Pasha of Egypt took over the Sultan, took, took their, their fleet, and if nothing would have happened, it was very clear that the Egypt, Egypt was going to uh, destroy the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire, to seek protection, it went to, uh, uh, to the uh, European power and says, you take the power, it's now in your hands. So that's when the power of the Ottoman Empire ended right there. And from that point on, just it was uh, nothing but continuous decline for the Ottoman Empire until, of course, World War I. But the official power, what God uh, declared was going to end in 18... Uh, the official end of this power was going to end in uh, August 11th, 1840. <clears throat> and that's what this means. The hour in verse 15 it says, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared okay, for, for, for a period, prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. So this was the year of the uh, Ottoman Empire, the, the time of the Ottoman Empire, which ended in August 11th, 1840. To slay the third part of men <clears throat> um, means to conquer the, um, the, what used to be the former 
uh, Roman Empire, which back in the days was the Eastern, Western, and this is before Augustus Caesar was also the the Southern um, European Empire, which was Northern Africa. Okay, <clears throat> but also the third part of uh, um, of people was actually the the Christian era to the which was actually the the um, the third part of the Christian the, the Christendom all right the Christianity on the uh, Eastern European side which was a small part not uh, I mean big but was a, only a third part of what was Christianity at that time um, The Euphrates River, okay, to be able to understand this, um, saying 14, to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. What Euphrates means is the, um, the Constantinople, okay? Um, Euphrates was the river springs out of Turkey. Okay, and Turkey was the territory also that that territory where Euphrates was springing belonged actually to uh, to the Byzantine Empire. So the Byzantine Empire with the capital of Constantinople was symbolically called Euphrates. And this empire was able to keep those the, the Turks and the Arabs and the Bedouins and the Saracens under control. To lose those means that the power of the Byzantine Empire was diminished. And once it diminishes, it creates a power vacuum. Okay? And the other ones now are conquering to, uh, to power. Just like it happened with all the empires of the world. You know, when one empire, one empire goes weak, somebody else comes over. And that's what this means. It's, it's a symbolic term used by God to explain this uh, procedure. Okay? This uh, exactly what happened here. Loose the angels from the river, which are bound by the river Euphrates. But the river Euphrates was the Byzantine Empire with the capital in Constantinople. Loosen them, meaning give the power to them over it, over Constantinople. And the Ottomans, they, they conquered Constantinople in this period, starting in 1449, okay? Um... They start working at they they in starting in 1449 they start planning to conquer Constantinople and they do it and they uh, uh, in 1453 they they conquer it in 1453 AD they were able to get Constantinople <clears throat> okay um, and verse 16 and the number of the armies. <clears throat> Of the army of the uh, horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. Um, I do not know exactly what this means. Um, 200,000 thousand. I'm not sure. So I cannot explain this. It says, and I heard the number of them. A lot of them. Um, the exact number, I do not know. But nobody has an exact number. And I'm not sure if that actually means the exact number. It's just that. Probably wants to say that there were many, many of them. <clears throat> uh, 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of adjacent, and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. <clears throat> the horsemen are those who lead the horse, which is the spirit. Okay? Horse being the spirit, like we like we, we, we said it in chapter six of Zechariah. Uh, so in other words, these are the instigators of the Muslim spirit. Okay, the ones who are controlling the Muslim spirit, the of this religion. All right, the horsemen that lead the spirit, and they have a righteousness of fire. Okay. <clears throat> Um, fire is actually the truth 
but there's not truth. Okay, um, they 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 think they they wear it as if it, as if it is their truth, but it is not. Um, of Jason, which is wants to show that it is a very um, precious stone, uh, also to make it look like it's uh, like really uh, pure truth, but it's not. And it's also brimstone, which uh, which um, smells um, okay, like like sulfur. That's what actually. Um, Brimstone smell they like it's like sulfur made so it's very very uh, stinky okay uh, so the righteousness of of uh, of brimstone is a righteousness which is stinky all right it, spiritually stinky or demonic so they have it's mixed demonic with truth and that's what Muslim uh, the Muslim religion is it's you know the teachings of Muhammad is Mix they mix he mixes Jesus and the teachings of Moses with with falsehood and that's what it is they have, they have um, breastplates righteousness of fire which is truth adjacent and brimstone and it's stinky and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions um, okay so <clears throat> so again the the Quran. Uh, contains a lot of truth from the Old Testament and some from the New Testament, uh, a big part of the Genesis, and a very um, superficial and dis deceitful teachings about Christ and his uh, Godhead or godliness. Uh, actually, his Godhead. This um, this knowledge and righteousness of the Muslims is it. Is a mixture of truth and lies, which is uh, one of the most perverse religions on earth, uh, like the the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which represents the the um, the climax of evil. Actually, like a like a like a wolf dressed in sheep's clothing. Okay, it's the same idea. Um, they have mixture from the Old Testament mixed. With from the Old Testament and the New Testament, mixed with other things which are actually false. Um, the head of the horses, okay, so this is the um, the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Heads of horses are the elders, okay, and the uh, the leaders. It's the same place as uh, Isaiah 9 15. Let's read that Isaiah 9 15. Mm. Um, I don't want to hold you for too long. I'm looking at the watch here. So, Isaiah 9.15, it says, The ancient and the honorable, he is the head, okay? And the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. So, these, these are the definitions of head and tail. So, the ancient and the honorable, he is the head. So, the head of the horses, okay? Um, uh, the head of the spirits, you know, who are promulgated the spirit which are like the, the rabbis the imams in those times uh, during the uh, Ottoman Empire and they are like lions which are actually like demons remember Judah Judas all right the, the the apostle who sold Jesus he's actually called a demon in the book of John John chapter 6 and here we have the explanation of lions first Peter 5 8 first peter 5 8 mm. it says but be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom whom he may devour okay as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so <clears throat> so these are the um, they're not like good lions here they're really uh devouring lions which are actually like demons. Same like the devil. All right. And um, and also out of the mouth issues, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So from the mouths is fire with its truth. 
and then smoke, which is the demonic uh, teachings, and um, brimstones, which is the uh, the false religion. Okay, so all these that's what comes out of, the, out of these people's mouths. Uh, truth mixed with uh, demonic teachings and this wrong religion, this false religion. And 18 and 19, by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Um, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and their heads and they and had heads and with them they do hurt. With these three, it was... Uh, the entire um, territory of the Greek Orthodox Church was poisoned uh, by this empire with these three. So the power which, uh, which spread this religion was with their, uh, it says here, for their power is in their mouth and in their tail. In other words, through speech, Okay, and also through false prophets, what the tail is. That's what it says here. For the power was in their mouth and in their tails. Mouth is through speech and with false prophets. All right, they were teaching also, and also they had false prophets. Um, yeah, so um, the false prophets were like, like um, their tails were like unto serpents. In other words, they're... False prophets, their tails were like serpents, like demons. All right. And these are, uh, and with these, their, their tails were, uh, were like serpents and had heads. And with them, they do hurt. And with these, with these false prophets, they were hurting um, this entire um, region, uh, the territory of the Greek Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. If you know um, countries like Albania, Serbia, um, Kosovo, all that area, they adopted strongly the, uh, the Muslim religion. The same with Armenia, uh, Kazakhstan, all Uzbekistan, all these areas over there, they were pretty much, they were uh, made, they were turned into Muslim before they were Christian. Or so-called Christian, okay? They were Christians under the uh, uh, the the um, Orthodox Greek Orthodox territory, and then they just became Muslims. They they uh, converted many such Christians. The third part of men, all right. The um, some of the Christians. That's what the third mean. Third third part of men means actually part of the remnant, but they, because they refused the light. They adopted darkness and they were converted to uh, the Muslim religion. <clears throat> yes. Um, and we're going to conclude with verse 20 and 21. Um, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship the devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone, and of wood which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So here it is talking about all those who um, used to listen to the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church. And they were worshipping idols, All right, these so-called Christians which did not obey or did not pay attention to these atrocities that were happening through these through the Ottoman Empire. So they can repent. They did not uh, pay attention to this. And they didn't realize because of the fact that they refused the truth, uh, they had uh, such atrocities come upon them in such a um, a very, uh, I should say, demonic religion, 
okay, that is the re uh, Muslim religion to come over them. If they refused the true light, which was preached by the reformers, well then they were given to the Ottoman Empire and they were converted to, uh, because they refused the light, the true light, and they accepted the Muslim religion. Uh, and, but these continued in such a way with stubbornness. That's what it actually means, with stubbornness. And it also not just refers to the ones who were converted to, uh, to the Muslim religion, but also the ones who remained Orthodox, because like the Russians remained Orthodox, the Greek, Greece remained Orthodox, um, part of the um, uh, Yugoslavia remained Orthodox, um, and um, further on, I mean, we, um, like northern Ukraine, that, that part, and Georgia, all these were remained Orthodox, and they remained Orthodox instead of changing because um, seeing what atrocities came uh, upon them, instead of repenting, they, they continued further in their stubbornness. That's what this means. And they did not repent. Even today, I mean, they're still holding on to their um, uh, Greek Orthodox religion. They consider themselves Christians, but they do not um, follow the Christian religion as it is written in the Bible. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe um, and share it with others. I'm trying my best to uh, explain um, the book of Revelation, which is almost entirely symbolic. We just need to know how to uh, let the Bible interpret itself so we can find the definitions um, elsewhere, you know, in other books of the Bible, so we can have a consistent uh, interpretation in the Bible and one is that is given only by the Bible and not from outside sources and we oh, we check with history to see how it happened so chapter 9 is about the uh, Ottoman Empire and how it developed under the with under the authority of the papacy because the, the papacy was actually the head of all evil at that time so God bless you Thank you for watching and um, keep studying and praying and prepare for, for the second coming and for the trial that is awaiting us. God bless you all. Until next time, good night.